So the talk is uh, about module operator and OpenShift containerization. Um, we wanted to discuss those topics because we, uh, and we'll see more in more detail in the slides, we have a, a project uh, with a customer that wants to uh, provide the SaaS. And so uh, with our relationship with uh, Red Hat and our experience uh, on, on Docker, that was the, uh, uh, using OpenShift was, was uh, the natural choice for us. And, um, but let me uh, start with this. A uh, few words about OSI. Uh, we were found, so Greg Mader founded the company in 2010. Uh, we provide business and IT professional services, uh, mostly on uh, and almost exclusively on open source, uh, using open source technology. We have customers in, uh, of different sizes uh, and industries all across the US, but also uh, in other countries uh, like Chile and, and Europe. Uh, we main office is in Arizona and uh, with another one in uh, Los Angeles and most of the other city here are uh, remote employee working from home. We won the best photo partner in North America this year and uh, last year also, and we are the, uh, one of the OCA Platinum sponsor. So the agenda, I'm not sure about the uh, uh, level of expertise of the attendees, so I just wanted to go through some definition here. We'll go through what, what's OpenShift, what's an operator, uh, what is the uh, operator framework? Uh, why why an Odoo operator and, and why now? And then we can uh, go to a technical discussion and uh, Mike here can, can help help me with uh, answering uh, any questions we may have at the end. So what's, what's OpenShift? It's uh, a platform uh, developed by Red Hat, uh, including the OpenShift container platform that, that basically allow you to uh, uh, run uh, Docker container uh, within the uh, uh, a Kubernetes on, on steroid cluster. So it's not just Kubernetes, but there is also Red Hat added some other services on, on top of it. And, uh, and I also, um, included OKD here because um, uh, like, like a almost, not all, but lots of Red Hat initiatives, they have the uh, open source projects, OKD or Fedora, or, and, and they have their product um, on top of it after some testing processes and then QA. Uh, so uh, we, so the idea here is stuff works on, on OKD and, and also OpenShift. Uh, and so it's, both of them, it's, it's really like, you get, you get uh, uh, an environment to, uh, to run your Docker uh, container. Uh, and it's, uh, the, you get all the Kubernetes services, you get on top of that, you get uh, some Jenkins uh, implementation to do some uh, continuous integration, continuous development process. You have uh, an image registry within OpenShift, so you don't need to uh, push your Docker image to a Docker Hub or another public uh, registry here. So you, it's, it really streamlines all the uh, processes uh, by having this all in the same cluster to host, to, to build, and configure and deploy uh, and run uh, containers. What is a, an operator? So it's a piece of software that, that uh, manages all the uh, operations of, a, of, a, of another one. So it, it's basically embed all the uh, system administrator knowledge 
into a into this operator so that we can automate and the uh, this uh, operation part of the uh, DevOps process uh, within within the cluster and, and an operator as like the, the schema shows here as as different level depending on on the capabilities and so level one here is the operator can and in the case of Odoo can install Odoo in in a cluster and so it can have a a, an instance uh, up, and, up and running uh, and then level two it, it can upgrade that, that image that the container uh, we can level three including all the uh, backup all the recovery uh, if, if that docker image fails and so and, and more deeper is the more advanced is the level deeper uh, automation is, is applied on the, uh, on the application and so it, it really take, takes the hands of the, the uh, system administrator where maybe today you, you handle uh, all this manually and, and you have to uh, maybe have your uh, system administrator team have to wake up during the night and make sure that the uh, uh, customer running a, a 24 seven website, uh, that the website is up and running and, and or, or if you want to automate some some upgrades on the uh, images, and that that's, that's the operator is is there to uh, to help you. And the thing is, the uh, Red Hat uh, provides a in a framework, uh, so it's to develop and provide an operator. So it's uh, it's an the operator framework with the uh, address given here, you can uh, download, set it up, and, and it will generate a, the template of the, uh, of the operator to, uh, to imp start implementing the different level to uh, provide those services to your application. So it, it's managed within Kubernetes and uh, it's it gives you the, uh, the, the template to, uh, to start uh, developing the, the framework and, and to start developing your own operator uh, with, that, with that framework. So why did we, why do we need an operator for Odoo and, and why now? Like I said at the beginning, we uh, have a uh, customer that uh, uh, Wolfgang presented yesterday in this uh, field service talk. It's uh, artisan floors. They want to uh, provide the, a solution based on Odoo for the uh, flooring industry in the US with uh, a different uh, editions of, of, the, uh, of the application. So we have a, a Kudu Essential, which is the, uh, the base a basic Odoo with uh, all the configuration being already done with the data, with the, uh, the right module being set up. And so the, the scenario is people uh, go on the website and they can start their uh, instance of Kudu Essentials and start using it for free for, for 30 days, for example. And so behind the scenes is uh, we get we get the, the name of the uh, of the instance and uh, and what we want to do is from from, from the Odoo website uh, connect to the uh, uh, OpenShift cluster and uh, start use the operator to build up this new instance using that name and so within a couple of minutes. The customer can go to uh, receive an email with a uh, with a link and uh, a password, and he can go to that link and connect to Kudu Essentials and and start using the uh, the application. And so that that's that's really the, the path of the uh, uh, where the operator level one will be would be used is really installing and creating the uh, the instance within the cluster, and then. 
again, the, uh, we want that model to scale. So uh, we may have, I don't know, 50, 50 or 100 companies or more than that, uh, companies running on this uh, cluster and, and we want to uh, the to automate the management of all those uh, containers and so that that's where the operator uh, will help us uh, do the backup do the upgrade uh, when we want to uh, mer to uh, update one from one version or do to uh, to another like to deploy security patches or uh, provide new features, uh, this kind of thing. So the idea is to have this operator being able to manage all those uh, containers within the infrastructure. So what we've done so far is we created and used the operator framework to generate the uh, Odoo operator. It, it's hosted on, on this uh, first repo here. And on the uh, OCA infrastructure one, we started the connector OpenShift module to, uh, to basically provide the interface for Modu uh, to decide, well, like, create this instance, destroy it, or uh, uh, deactivate it if the customer doesn't pay. So it's all related uh, today to uh, the sales subscription module from the enterprise, but it was just a quick and easy way to get started. But the idea is in the long run, uh, we want to switch to the contract module and uh, manage the, uh, the uh, availability of the instance of the containers uh, based on the uh, Odoo interface. So if customer doesn't pay or credit card get rejected, then we can uh, hold on the, uh, or, or block the access to the, um, to the container, or we can shut down the, the image, uh, or, and if he uh, is leaving the infrastructure, then we can just say, well, uh, after, after his trial, or after being, using the application, if he wants to leave, we can just destroy the, uh, the, uh, the, contain the containers on the, from the Odoo interface. So, and that, that's using the uh, OC command uh, to uh, talk with the uh, OpenShift API and trigger those, those uh, actions and on the cluster. Uh, so if I go to the... Uh, so you can see the, uh, that, that's the base here. I, we haven't done any uh, work on this yet. It's really like running the, uh, the uh, operator framework to, to generate this. And uh, it's all uh, written in Go. And uh, so the, the idea of this talk is see if there are some people interested to, uh, uh, with this approach and wanted to uh, contributes and help us in, in this initiative. So that, that's the uh, uh, operator part here. And the other, uh, the other one is the uh, OCA infrastructure. So we have the uh, pull request uh, here regarding uh, the uh, OpenShift connector. And uh, that's uh, in progress here. It uh, uh, needs to be tested and uh, Again, that um, you may you may already have an OpenShift, so it, it's working with OpenShift version four. Uh, the cluster we have is running on four point three. Uh, if you are interested, we can help you at any stages of whether it's installing the cluster. Uh, we went through the pain of installing it on the DigitalOcean, and uh, which is which wasn't a supported platform, but it's uh, it's working pretty well now, and uh, but we can we can look at any other any other hosting provider for for the hardware and and help you get set up and uh, and the idea is I think with a minimal effort we can have an affordable uh, solutions to uh, manage a SaaS uh, within within Odoo. So that's uh, 
pretty quick presentation and, and definition. And uh, if, is, is there like some feedbacks, questions, people interested uh, that wants to join the effort? Uh, that's, that's where we are right now. Mike, do you want to comment on something? No, you got covered most of it. I think that the SaaS uh, platform sort of case is what we're looking at. And um, the, the other place where I could see this being useful is if you have any sort of company that has a very large number of servers that are going to need to be managed all running the same code base. So maybe like a franchise type based business, um, it can really help to automate and cut down on a lot of the uh, system administration type work that needs to be done to maintain uh, a large group of servers. Okay. <clears throat> well, thank you, uh, Maxime and Michael, uh, so far. I see uh, a question from uh, Ivan who is asking, have you considered uh, other technologies such as Runchar? Uh, nope. We, I mean, the uh, we went we went the open shift route uh, for a couple of reasons. One is uh, uh, working with uh, Camp to Camp that, that have been using open shift, uh, and we had the uh, we were not exposed to it, but we had to work with uh, with Camp to Camp on a on a pro on a European project together a couple of years ago. And uh, so that, that's, that's where we got to know uh, and learn about OpenShift. And then also the, the idea here is, is uh, well, second reason is the partnership with Red Hat. And, uh, and that's, uh, that's where we, uh, we, got, uh, we got started here. And, and the good thing with, with started with Red Hat is uh, I think within a couple of weeks, we got all the uh, team members at OSI being trained and, and certified using the uh, Red Hat uh, certification and e-learning platform, which is, I think, so that the, I mean, we could have gone the uh, Rancher uh, pass, but that, that may have been something that takes us longer uh, of going through uh, the pain of running everything by hand and, and and so that going going with Red Hat was, yeah, taking the highway and getting there in a short shorter uh, amount of time. And uh, wh where we decided to uh, really focus the effort is uh, making this uh, option affordable, uh, because our experience with the Red Hat certification is. They, they only mention the big names to deploy it. So it works like it takes 30 minutes to install OpenShift on AWS or Azure or uh, Google Cloud platform. But those, those platform, we, we've made a benchmark, benchmark in terms of uh, financial cost. And those are really expensive. Uh, and the idea with we want, we spend, we lose sometimes. Uh, we went, like I said, we went through the pain of installing it in DigitalOcean. And that may have cost us maybe one or two weeks uh, delayed. But the, uh, at the end, uh, I think the whole infrastructure today uh, was like runs, you can have an open shift cluster at DigitalOcean for less than $300 a month. And, uh, that that same setup with AWS, you get that in three days. It's like it's it's the difference in the cost is is so uh, uh, it's it's amazing. And so that's where for, for I think for customers that wants to uh, that may be interested to deploy uh, OpenShift or have the requirements for it, uh, being able to deploy it uh, at this cost with with a decent provider uh, is, is a game changer. It's uh, uh, an easier approach than, than, than going with, the, uh, with those big names. So 
in terms of in, in terms of feature, I don't know uh, if Renshaw enough to give you a comparison between the two, but for what we needed to do and what we need to do in the future, that's uh, <laughs> OpenShift does everything we need. It's uh, except except the Odoo operator part that we need to implement here, but uh, I'm hoping by the end of the year we'll we'll have a at least the first version where we can install uh, an Odoo, when we can start an Odoo instance within the cluster. Okay. But if, if, you know, if you know more about Rancher and have some counter arguments to, to our choice, I'm happy to hear it. Hear it. We can discuss it in, in a chat. Um. Thanks for the answer. I have I don't have uh, any uh, questions for participants attendees, but I, I have one uh, by myself. Uh, just to um, uh, okay. So Ivan says one argument from uh, for, for Rancher is that it's uh, one hundred percent open source. Well, OKD is one hundred percent open source as well. I mean. I, I just wanted uh, to, to make sure I had, uh, because I, I'm personally not so familiar with uh, OpenShift and uh, operators and, and all that. I uh, just wanted to make sure I had the, the use case right. So this the, the project you're making is maybe uh, targeting an IT company who is uh, willing to sell, I don't know, maybe uh, uh, some... Uh, WordPress uh, blog hosting, and you can purchase uh, a WordPress blog from that company. And the idea is you make a sale order with one WordPress blog with some dimensions, parameters, whatever, and you sell it. And when you receive the payment for that, uh, the operator part is in charge of piloting OpenShift to set up a container running that uh, WordPress blog. Yep, that, that's yeah, that's that's the idea. You get you go to the Odoo website. I mean, we, we have a the SaaS the SaaS website, and uh, you go you add the instance to your cart. You go, I mean, and the idea that is to uh, provide like uh, a thirty days trial. So you you go you go through the. Uh, this sales order or checkout process with the uh, with a zero dollar pro product, and when when the sales order is confirmed, uh, Odoo creates the uh, subscription or the contract, and that based on the name that was given during the uh, checkout process by by the by the customer, you spin up a you so the you contact the uh, you you use the operator to provision the uh, the instance so it creates uh, a project in the cluster it starts the uh, uh, the uh, postgres container uh, allocate the volumes to uh, store the data uh, starts the uh, spin up the uh, container or the pods for for odoo based on on the on the operator configuration and and yeah within a couple minutes uh, you get name dot the name of the cluster being sent by email to the to the customer with with his password, and he can connect and and start using it. And I think the the previous talk before this, I caught the tail end of it. They were talking about a music industry solution. Um, this is what we're talking about. We're we're creating is for the flooring industry, but I think there's a lot of different places where you can have a set of standard tools within an Odoo installation that can serve a specific industry. And this allows for that to be kind of treated in a SaaS way, as opposed to trying to go to each of those people individually and try to sell them a project, sort of that sort of thing. It's more of a, they can evaluate themselves as a standard set of tools that make sense for their industry. And then depending on if they choose to continue, it just turns into a subscription service at that point. Okay. Yeah, and the product is really a uh, with our with our customer. Question here: What is the flooring industry? It's not making floors, is it? 
No, it, it's uh, it's about so in the US you have a uh, Lots of uh, property complex with a uh, hundred or two hundred apartments, and and it's managed by a, a company. And so when when people move in or move out and, and move in, they usually do a a review of the apartment. And if I mean people may have been staying in the apartment for for years and smoking inside, and so what they do is. Uh, this, this, our customers is dedicated to getting phone call from those company and go on the next day changing the carpet, changing the, the floor, changing the vinyl. Uh, and okay. so they, they send contractors with the uh, carpet uh, on the, in the truck and they take out the old one and install the new one and within a couple of hours, they're done. Okay. So, sorry, I didn't know the, the, the word. <laughs> what? I didn't. It's the first time I hear this word in English. Oh, flooring. Yeah, I, I, car, carpet is maybe one that would have made more sense, but it's it's all about replacing the the sort of whatever's okay. covering your floor. <laughs> That's fine. Sorry for uh, <laughs> for this. Um, uh, checking uh, the clock. Uh, it's. Time is almost up. Uh, are there any other questions? Or uh, Ivan, if you wanted to uh, ask another question, uh, just raise your hand and I'll allow you to talk because maybe it's more efficient if you want to discuss things directly with uh, Michael and uh, Maxime. Oh, Ivan is mad at us because it's not fully open source. Don't think he's mad. <laughs> no, he says, no, that's okay. Thank you. <laughs> cool. Okay, well, uh, thank you, Maxime, and thank you, Michael, for uh, joining in and uh, making this presentation. Um, I will now uh, switch chairs, uh, switch chairing with uh, uh, Simone, who is going to take over uh, this role from me. Um, and uh, hi there. Next, uh, the next talk. Yep. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Maxime.